Welcome to this week's Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield on the Rural Radio Network. We are at Commodity Classic, which is taking place in Orlando, Florida. So I won't talk about the warm weather because I'm in a conference center. So we aren't seeing the, the, the sunshine, but understand more moisture has hit many areas of the Midwest, not what the cattlemen want, especially with calving underway right now. So lots of things we're going to take a look at. Now, as we're recording this program on a Thursday, it was definitely a down day in the markets all the way across the board. And so we'll talk about what that effect has had on the cattle market. Brad Coima joins us again this week. He's with Coima Coima Varlick out of Sioux Center, Iowa. So let's talk. I mean, National Down Day is kind of how you described um, what we saw in the trade. And I think it's a great way to describe the negativity that went on in this trade. Boy, we sure did. Thanks for having me on, Susan. Have fun down there. Yeah, it's not quite that nice of weather here. Um, (laughs) The uh, customer, the clientele here are getting really bloody sick of the weather. I can tell you that. Uh, And uh, and I am, and I don't have to fight it like they do uh, as well. The, uh, it's an apt description, I think, you know, once in a while you just have one of these, um, uh, type of days where, uh, you know, we've had several uh, of these calls lately where it's all, you know, high fives and back slaps, right? You know, another big up day and rock and roll. Uh, so, you know, not every day is that way. And I, I think today, sometimes the market whole psychology uh, and, and don't forget that there are funds that trade these indexes that are a mix of a lot of different funds, a lot of different commodities. Um, and so, yeah, sharply lower wheat, corn, beans, uh, and miss uh, at cattle hogs, obviously as well. Even the feeder cattle today, with the sharply lower corn market, was a little disappointing. So, part of it is that, and and I think you know to to maybe understand that on a little less hypothetical level is, I, I think that the, the crowd that is bearish, uh, and I'm not I'm not in that camp, uh, but the crowd that's bearish is talking about things like interest rate hikes, uh, a worry about the economy, uh, you know continued worry about, and these things are real, uh, continued worry about, you know, international uh, impacts of different, you know, things with China, Russia, et cetera, right? Ukraine, all that stuff. And and so that that throws an air of uncertainty a little bit. And and particularly when you're at levels here that the cattle haven't been at for a long time, you know, maybe you get a down day a little easier. I I would mention though, that, you know, the cattle kind of firmed a little bit late, the front months came back and we're actually a little stronger than the back months. So it it seems to me, at least Susan, that you know, the market still seems to be okay to me, alive and well, uh, in terms of the bull market. Well, you know, here at Commodity Classic, guys, we're talking the fact that obviously it was a down day in the grains all the way across the board. But usually cattle, especially those feeders, take advantage when corn takes a drop. And they did not in this trade. And they didn't. And that's a little, you know, uh, uh, the old saying here uh Charlie and I used to say, uh, when you whip the horse, he had better run. <laughs> when the news is good, it better rally, right? And uh, so, you know, that 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 you should, you know, put up a little yellow flag that, hey, maybe, you know, we should be a little careful for a minute. And I think that that's well, well said. I, I, I would say, though, that the feeder cattle have gone straight up, you know. So, I mean, uh, in some cases, some of these months have rallied $18 almost without hardly a correction. So, a down day maybe uh, shouldn't be, uh, you know, reason to crawl out on the window ledge just yet. But uh, feeder cattle are high. I mean, who's kidding who? Uh, deferred cattle are, are, are really high. But the cash feeder cattle market, of course, has been on fire here for the last several weeks, as anybody that knows that's been trying to buy the live feeder cattle. So, as you look at the, the overall big picture of the way this market's trading going into next week, especially when we saw some softness coming out of Kansas. How is that going to set the tone as we start into, you know, another week of March and and guys getting anxious to see some higher prices? Well, I think <clears throat> the, the traditionally the South, and I think this is another, it's a, it's a more seasonal year. We've talked about how maybe we finally got in the market back to a place where there is maybe a little more reliability in some of the seasonalities uh, that used to work. <clears throat> Typically, the, the the South will go into a few more cattle now in March and April as the North comes out of them. I, I think what, what maybe has been lost on some people is that the, the the supply cattle here in the North for the next 45 to 60 days, in my view, is much less than what they think. Uh, the weather has hurt all the way down to these calves. Uh, I don't think you'll have calves ready in April. Uh, so, you know, we're going to stay snug <clears throat> You know, for, for fun today. Yesterday afternoon, I was doing some uh, you know, walk down memory lane, if you would. Uh, what happened to April cattle in 2014? Uh, 2014, of course, the bull market of our career so far until this next one comes along. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, you know, that the pattern there, it took until about the middle of March and then we kind of caught again and then the April let us out of there and uh, uh, April went to a steep premium over all the back months, uh, which I kind of hope happens. I wouldn't mind it if we take a little premium out of the back months just to, I don't know, 
take a little of the edge off of what these feeder cattle cost for the guys you know, because there is risk of course there so uh, to me there's there's a lot of similarities um, moisture of course a big factor as we get a little closer to springtime um, there's still some places in the south that still are a little less than perfect uh, although across the north here you know we've got plenty of moisture and I would think we'll have some grass to get started here for sure now there is something positive to talk about when the snow yep. melts the green grass that's going to come for these these cows absolutely and that's that's a big deal to these people i mean it's their livelihood it's they got generations of genetics and 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 you know i i feel for them uh completely so let's hope we can get back to a little more normal deal where we don't have to cull cows and we can hold some heifers and get back to letting them rebuild their herds again wonderful real quick as we wrap up uh, you talked earlier about uh the big fund roll and obviously it's that time with with golden how do you see that affecting the trade into the rest of the week Okay, it was day three of the Goldman today. Uh, old days, that was when the speculator may say, okay, uh, maybe the worst of it's over. So you dare to maybe tread a little water there, you know, maybe try to buy some April, sell some deferreds uh, if you're a spreader. Um, this time, we've got a lot bigger open interest to move because we've had the rally. So we've attracted that 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 trend following fund, not just the index like the Goldman. There's funds that, you know, have signals that they, in an uptrending market, they're long, right? So uh, we're going to move more. So I, I think it's going to take us a little while to, to assimilate all that selling of April. Now, if you were just a raw speculator uh, and didn't know any the difference between a heifer and a steer, wouldn't you be interested in buying June cattle $4 less than the April? Even if there are more cattle, we know there are a few more cattle in June than there is in April, but they don't. Uh, so I think the roll is going to go a little smoother than what most people think. If you remember how February went off, we just basically went straight up the whole month of February and you know, took no prisoners. I, I don't know if we'll have that kind of an April, but uh, I, uh, I, I'm certainly not ready to stand in front of it. I think the market's got a great undertone. All right. Sounds good. Well, thanks for joining us this week, Brad. You got it. That's been this week's Cattle Calls. We always remind you, commodity futures and options involve a substantial risk of loss not suitable to all investors. And that is the Cattle Call right here on the Rural Radio Network.